and uh, oh yeah, so we we record the uh, video if you don't mind. Yeah. Sure, no problem. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. And this work is a collaborative with uh, different professors and uh, our, our student or joint or joint or their student, and uh, also supported by National Science Foundation. And I hope that through this one we can find more collaborations uh, to the uh, with the audience. And uh, okay, here is the outline. First, we talk about the motivation and uh, what is the uh, what is the quantum computing basic. And then we there are different type of quantum computing. We concentrate on the quantum annealing, and then we talk about the mathematical model and the one algorithm behind. And then by based on this model uh, algorithm. We propose this a hybrid quantum uh, Bender decomposition so that uh, we can utilize the advantage of quantum computing as well as the classic uh, CPU computing. And finally, we give several kind of uh, applications for machine learning, uh, for wireless network, and also for smart grid. And finally, we have to conclude. So for this uh, quantum computing, okay, uh, many years ago, this uh, same man said that okay, maybe we can use the quantum mechanism to do the computer to do the computing. And many years later, okay, there are recently, okay, quantum computing become one of the kind of uh, um, hottest topic. And uh, most likely after this uh, AI, okay, the next week might be the quantum computing. And also there are many kind of breakthrough for the quantum computing recently. So why quantum computing? What's wrong with the classical computing? So suppose the number of combination, okay, in this case, it's a two bit. Then for the classic computer, we need to uh, we need to enumerate all these four different cases to see which one is the optimal. And uh, if the number of bits increase, the number of enumeration becomes uh, exponentially high. And uh, when this kind of uh, just a uh, thousands of bit, okay, there will no, no way, okay, you can you can enumerate them all. On the other hand, okay, there are many kind of a practical problem, which is NP hard. For example, life science about the gene and the manufacturer logistic about scheduling and the financial service. So all these things kind of uh, NP hard problem and the classic computer have difficult to handle due to this combinatorial uh, nature and NP hard nature. So on the other hand, quantum computing have this huge advantage. And typically quantum computing is uh, calculated in this way. So First, they have this kind of uh, activate the spread. So among this uh, uh, quantum, they try to uh, entangle the bit. So in this is the first step, entangle the bit. So suppose you have a two to the power of uh, n kind of a combination, and then you only need an n bit entangled bit. And the second approach is encode the problem. So you have your own problem, then you try to encode it so that, okay, some of the result will have the low energy, which is more means with a higher probability to come out. And we will talk about how to, how to kind of encode this problem. The major, the major talk, the major topic of today is try to uh, discuss how to encode the problem so that we can solve this uh, kind of traditional uh, NP hard means integral programming. And then, okay, in the third step, is try to kind of unleash the power, basically, okay, do the sampling. As this kind of, a, we all know the quantum uh, quantum cat, right? Okay, it can be a kind of a dead or, or alive. So in this state, in the first state and the second state, all the different state exist, but only with a different probability in the parallel universe, okay? And when you open this kind of, uh, when you do the sampling, then the, the thing, the thing, one of the results will become deterministic with a certain probability. And which result? Because in the second part, okay, we encoded this problem with our specific problem. So the optimal solution will come out uh, with a uh, come out in the uh, in the third part part, in the third step when you're sampling with the highest probability. So in this case, okay, you get the result with one shot. Okay, so this is a kind of difference between the quantum computing and the classic computing. Classic computing, they have to enumerate all the combination, then it's too hard. And uh, for the quantum computing, you can uh, you can only use the n bit to solve the two to the power of n kind of combinatorial. Okay, so uh, in the quantum computing, okay, there are different types. Okay, one type is quantum annealing. So basically, uh, like the D wave. 
and then they specifically concentrate on the optimization. And the second, uh, second part is, uh, is a quantum, uh, analog quantum. So basically, okay, like uh, infinity Q. So basically, it's, uh, for this uh, sampling quantum dynamic, so the generality is partial. And finally, this is the, 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 the most general one, the universal quantum, like the IBM and so on. So basically, they are using for this kind of cryptography and also some kind of uh, security computing. So the generality is the high, highest. However, the number of bit, quantum bit that it can be implementable is just the reverse. For the more general one, you, have, you only have dozens of bit. Now for this kind of more specific one, like the D-Wave, uh, they can they can have a, a five thousand bit already, and then okay in this talk we try to concentrate on the D wave, and uh, try to see how could we solve this uh, optimization problem. So here okay again okay for quantum computing we have a three different type, which is a gate level a gate model which is a more kind of a general uh, most general one analog quantum model and the quantum manually, and then we concentrate on the quantum manually, and. Uh, so here, okay, uh, the, the so-called quantum manually is that, okay, if I'm falling into this kind of a, a, a local optimal, traditionally for classical method, you need to climb the hill and then come to the better optimal. Then in this case, it's called annealing. However, for quantum, maybe you can pipe, pipe uh, you can have the tunnel effect to directly go to this kind of a, a better local optimal or even global optimal. So, that is the kind of a quantum computing basic. And the next we want to talk about this, um, uh, this kind of a, a, a quantum annealing basic. And also so we start from this uh, uh, adi adiabatic kind of quantum computing mathematical model. And then we, we talk about this kind of uh, uh, QBO algorithm. So first about the annealing. And in real life, we heat the metal to a certain temperature, and then we try to heat it. And uh, the reason is that, okay, we want to the, the metal to go to the higher, de uh, higher this kind of uh, temperature, and when you heat it and cooling down it, and it will convert to a better shape. And for the simulation annealing, as I mentioned, if you are falling to the local optimal, you have to heat it up, and then, okay, go uphill, and then downhill again, hope you can fall, fall into the local, better local optimal. So this is a classic uh, simulated annealing algorithm. And then, okay, for quantum annealing, basically, okay, you try to encode this kind of uh, non-convex op option so that, okay, there are cer certain points, the result will come out with a different probability. And then how, uh, due to the quantum uh, tunneling, okay, there will be a certain probability that, okay, this, uh, this local optimum will appear with a low, uh, uh, kind of local, low, uh, different uh, uh, probability to appear. And also, okay, this, uh, uh, the width is not a problem, uh, the, the height will not be a problem and the width will be uh, more important. So next we try to see how the algorithm can solve these things. And uh, the quantum annealing, so basically starting again from this three step. The first step is that, okay, we initial the qubit. So basically we have this uh, zero and one, basically depending on the rotating and the not yet coupled. And then in the first stage, we try to couple it. And the, uh, sorry, in the second stage, we try to couple it. And then, okay, those those coupling the uh, initial qubit, uh, I'm not a physician, and uh, I'm not a physics. So basically, okay, uh, we use the D-wave to, to do that. And after that, okay, there are many state to uh, many portable state. Then what we will do is that, okay, we try to have certain algorithm such that, okay, make this kind of a result with a different combination with a different energy. And then, okay, the lower energy will, will have the higher probability to show up. So you can see that, okay, we can suppose this is an algorithm this is a non convex algorithm that we need to find the global optimal. And if we can encode this kind of uh, the optimization curve by using the qubit, uh, such as it have this shape, then we know that, okay, this part, the point lo located here will have low energy. And then, okay, when we do the sample, when we do the sample, the first step to, unleash the power when we open the box, okay, 
it will appear with a higher probability. So this is a basically kind of a key idea. And the simulator and learning is to change in this uh, uh, constraint optimization problem into this kind of a uh, uh, qubit to represent this curve. And next we will show you how to do it. And here, okay, I understand that most of you understand this qubit, but for the sake of the older audience, allow me to briefly uh, introduce this uh, qubit and the quantum operation. And then we have the qubit and the, uh, it's a zero and the one different rotation. This alpha beta is a probability. And then when they this kind of uh, add together, uh, the square root of a probability, and then when you add together is equal to one. And also you can have this uh, two, uh, two quantum bit. And then two quantum bit, you have a four different dimension. And then this R0, zero, zero, R0, zero, one, R10, one, zero, and R4, one, their square root represent the probability. And then obviously you can extend this one to n bit and a similar story here. And uh, for Sch uh, Schrodinger equation, okay, basically this is a before starting the quantum and after starting quantum, you can see that, okay, it's very different. And so basically they have this uh, dynamic. And this dynamic, this uh, this phi is this kind of state of the system, and H is uh, the Ham uh, Hamiltonian, and then this Hamiltonian and also this uh, instantaneous eigen eigenstate can can have this kind of equation. So in this case, okay, by using such kind of property, okay, our question here is that okay, could we using this kind of uh, physics to encode the nonlinear fun uh, non convex function with multiple kind of uh, uh, local optimal with this uh, this case okay this come to this uh, adiabatic quantum computing uh, computing so the overall overview is that okay the computing approach utilize the quantum uh, uh, mechanism and prepare the system in an initial state and transform into the final state and the has the potential to speed up the computing process and um, uh, the polynomial are equivalent to the circular model. So we are not using the quantum model, okay? We are using this uh, 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 adiabic computing model, but uh, this kind of uh, kind of equivalent. And then we can using this one into this kind of uh, uh, optimization problem, which can be applied into many kind of, uh, I mean, quadratic uh, unconstrained binary optimization problem. So basically, okay, we starting from the solution, we have the final state and the initial state, target, target energy, and then we prepare this kind of Hamilton into this way. Okay, and uh, then, okay, specifically, okay, uh, for the QUBO, okay, proposed by uh, D, uh, D-Link, okay, the core idea to encode this one is uh, the objective function as the eigenvector of the final ground state of Schrodinger equation based on this uh, uh, adiabatic quantum model. Specifically, they work on this easing model. The so-called easing model is that okay, the spin with a uh, with a field will be uh, its own field as well as a neighbor. It will also influenced by the neighbor. And then, if we map this kind of state and also this h with this kind of uh, uh, quadratic unconstrained optim uh, binary optimization, we can see that, okay, we can map into a kind of optimization like this one. While this x is uh, basically a uh, positive one and the minus one, basically the spin or this binary. And then, okay, this this uh, uh, xi and xj is uh, basically uh, the, um, the correlated one. And this q represents the correlation between xi and xj, and this qi is itself. So this one is an unconstrained one. And then for such kind of problem, due to this uh, binary binary kind of, uh, I mean, nature of XI, it fits into many different applications like knife size problem, assignment problem, task allocation, and, and so on. So in this case, okay, we can map the integral programming problem into this QUBO. And also we can even add this kind of uh, uh, constraint uh, into this QBO, and later we will tell you. However, this is the integral programming, and uh, for the mixed integral programming, okay, which widely used, widely formulated in in the network problem, we will propose later. Okay, so here, okay, for D wave, they have this uh, structure of the chimera and uh, gases, and basically this is easy model, and then this kind of uh, Hamilton will represent in this way. 
they have an initial Hamilton and final Hamilton. And then by initialize this kind of a plus one and a minus one, and then we can have this kind of a, a initial one drop and the final one drop. And then at certain time, we can kind of sample so that we can get this final Hamilton result. And so this is a basically, okay, D wave structure. And then specifically, how could we quantify this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of, uh, this uh, easing model or this uh, kind of a QBO model? And suppose this uh, delta have the plus and the minus one for binary. And then, okay, if my H is a positive or if H is negative, so basically, okay, means I want uh, this uh, uh, sigma to be true because we have a minimization problem. And if it's a zero, that means we don't care. And if it's positive, that means we really like it to be. So this H will represent this, um, for this specific value, what we really want or not. And then for the for this uh, um, for this J, and uh, the J basically means that okay, uh, you uh, if J is uh, negative, we want uh, both to be equal. If it's not, I don't care. If it's positive, we want to be different. So in this case, okay, we have this H and a J. We can describe a kind of nonlinear uh, non convex function. For example, the uh, the one that the one that we, we want to see the non convex function like this one with the local optimal. We describe it by using this one with the shape look like this. So with a more bit, we can describe this one, okay, the original function into a more kind of a refined way. But uh, in other words, okay, no matter what type of um, what type of this uh, uh, non convex function you have and uh, or the constraint you, you want to add, we can describe this uh, this kind of your original curve is a sufficient sufficient number of quantum bit. And then okay, we also see that okay because uh, here they have the lowest energy, and then uh, after encoding this way, when we sample the the result here, we all have the highest probability to come out. So this is a basically okay the idea of the D wave the QBO. Okay. So QOBO is not proposed by us, and uh, we use it. But uh, QOBO have the limitation because it's only for the binary, binary unconstrained signal. So we, uh, in most of the, in most of our kind of uh, uh, research, okay, we have the mixed integral programming problem. So in this case, okay, we need to have a uh, more complicated. And moreover, okay, the classical computer have its advantage. For example, for this continuous variable, and they have a very much strong convex optimization like the gradient descendant method. So for class, uh, for this continuous variable, okay, uh, solution. On the other hand, quantum computing is not that powerful uh, due to the, you need to quantify, quantify a lot and uh, you don't have sufficient bit. So in this case, okay, we, we try to think whether or not we can link this uh, classical computer with the quantum computer together so that, okay, we can take advantage of, of uh, both sides. And so that, okay, we can, uh, we, uh, and then we can solve the solution efficiently. So this is a basically uh, idea behind. And then we try to formulate this missing programming and, uh, um, it can be linear or can be convex. I think it doesn't matter. But here we, we use the linear for better illustration. Convex is also okay. And even non-convex, you can also do it. So here for simplicity, I use the linear throughout the, the, this part to be better illustration. So suppose you have an optimization with X and Y, and Y is a continuous variable, X is integral. And the, your objective function and the constraint are coupled. So in this case, it's a typically an NP-hard, misintegral programming problem, and typically it's NP-hard. And uh, for the classic computer, it's very difficult to solve. On the other hand, okay, for quantum computer, it is easy to solve X, but for Y, this continuous real, real value is difficult. So how could we do it? And then, okay, here we try to utilize the Bender decomposition. And then let's, let me introduce this uh, Bender decomposition first. First, for the original problem, we try to uh, solve this kind of, uh, uh, we try to solve the integral part first by assuming Y as a kind of uh, uh, a feasible solution. So in this case, this is a pure integral program. Okay. And then, okay, on the other hand, okay, 
after solving this x, after solving this x with a fixed x, okay. After the solving this x, this uh, when the dual problem, uh, the, the, the sum problem, which is uh, solving the y, solving the y, which is a continuous variable. In this case, x is a constant. So in this case, it's a pure continuous variable. And this one can be solved by the classical computer, com classical computer efficiently. And uh, if we if you solve this integer and the classic uh, iteratively, this is called block coordinate de descent method, which is uh, can, can solve the problem. However, we want to do the better. But what we will do is that, okay, after this kind of, um, uh, after this kind of, uh, I mean, uh, the continuous variable, we will do this uh, uh, duality. And then we change to this kind of duality problem. And in this case, we will have the new feasible region Q. So uh, in this case, okay, we have this uh, uh, new feasible region Q, this problem will basically, okay, uh, the, the continuous uh, sub problem will generate a kind of a lower bound because the dual problem is a lower bound, such as it's either is a kind of a extreme point or extreme ray. The, the result, because it's a linear, okay, and then, in this case, okay, you will generate either this bound or this bound. In other words, any solution below this one, below this bound, will not be kind of, uh, I mean, will not be optimal. So in this case, what 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 we want, really want to say is that, okay, after this uh, sum problem so, so, uh, solving due to the duality, we generate a new bound for the prime problem, such as any kind of a solution that uh, that kind of uh, I mean, uh, outside this bound will will not be optimal compared with the current one. So in this case, okay, when we come back to the prime problem, when we come back to the problem prime problem, and then our solution, or kind of uh, or new kind of solution, we are added this new uh, the bender's cut that's provided by the previous round uh, uh, continuous variable. So in this case, this uh, the searching space for this uh, second round uh, integral programming will be much smaller. Okay, so in this case, okay, these two solution will continue, and then okay, in the middle, okay, they um, they they also have a we try to replace this kind of uh, uh, DLP with a function t. Okay, so this DLP should be transmitted, uh, uh, communicated through this uh, prime problem and the uh, sum problem. So in this case, okay, if we define this uh, DLP equal to T, and then, okay, in this case, we can solve this um, master problem like this one, and uh, the slave problem using this one. And uh, for master problem, it's using quantum bit. And after that, you give the solution X to the, to the slave problem. And the slave problem using this uh, classical computer to solve, after that, give the additional quantum card. And uh, and then okay, the the new they will be more constrained in the primary problem. So in this case, these two are iterated together. And here is the algorithm. And again, okay, the master problem and the slave problem, and then iterative until it converge. And moreover, okay, the convergence is that okay because this is a linear or convex. If you linear and a convex case. Then every time we can have this uh, lower lower bound and upper bound, and we can check the lower bound and upper bound when they converge, then we, we will stop, okay. So, and uh, in the middle, okay, there are one more thing, okay. And uh, so this is a Bender decomposition. Uh, this is an overall Bender decomposition. This is a classic algorithm that I've been uh, existing decade. And then here, we try to kind of map into the quantum. So basically this again, this is a master problem, like a slave problem. And uh, for master problem, we want to quantify at the QVO. So you can see there are several things. First, we have constraint. Second, we have a continuous variable T here. So basically how could we overcome these two problems into the quantum, into the QVO? So th this is a kind of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, classic Bender problem. So first one, we quantify this T by using M bit. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of quantum bit so that we just do a quantumization. Okay, so this is the first thing for this continuous variable, we do the quantization by cost of M bit. And uh, then, okay, 
So basically, okay, now, okay, this is a, this is a kind of a thing. Um, this is a changing the T into here. So on the right-hand side, this will be a kind of a, a pure integral programming problem. And then the second thing is that, okay, for this uh, uh, constraint, okay, for the constraint, if it's a equal, greater or equal or less or equal or less this one, we can use the equivalent penalty for this one. So all these constraints is linear, which fit into this shape. Then we can put all these constraints into the different kind of a penalty function into this objective function. So in this case, okay, we will have this, all these uh, uh, optimality card and the feasibility card. These are two things we can put into this, uh, uh, we can put into this kind of, uh, uh, this equivalent penalty. So finally, okay, this is a kind of, uh, I mean, unconstrained optimization. So we successfully changed the, this uh, prime problem into the unconstrained problem. And this is a QBO. This is your objective fun original objective function. The second row is this T, communication that can quantify this T. And the third row and the fourth row is basically feasibility card and the optimality card that's pro uh, provided by the sub problem of the continuous CPU optimization each round to this, uh, to this kind of master problem. So here we can successfully using this uh, QOBO to solve this uh, master problem. And after solving the master problem, we provide an integral solution to the classic CPU and then come back. So basically this, this solution is a iterative. And the overall algorithm is listed here and here's the master problem, here's the slave problem. So this is the thing. And you can see that, okay, we fully take advantage by using the hybrid uh, quantum vendor decomposition and uh, we fully take advantage of the quantum computing and the classic CPU. Quantum computing is good for integral programming problem. Uh, and the classic CPU is uh, for this uh, uh, continuous, uh, uh, continuous variable one. And you can see, okay, after this uh, changing, and the master problem is uh, indeed an integral programming and the sub problem is obviously, okay, a continuous optimization only. And there are many solutions the, uh, from the Stephen Boyd's Combined Optimization textbook, and you can use in the uh, CPU part. And uh, also, okay, if you let me add one more thing. Okay, if you uh, if you your problem is a convex or even non-convex, it is still okay. Uh, it's for convex. Okay, obviously, see, uh, some problem you can solve it using the convex optimization. You're still achieving the global optimal. But you see, non-convex, okay, you still in, in the in this uh, some problem, you still can use in this uh, something like a successful uh, su uh, this uh, uh, DC algorithm or this kind of successful approximation SCA algorithm to approach the non-convexity. However, if your problem is non-convex, this upper bound and the lower bound might not be kind of accurate. In that case, the convergent uh, the the deterministic uh, the, to determine whether or not it's convergence or the convergence property is extremely hard to analyze. Anyway, so this is the thing. And here we show you some kind of toy example with a different A and a G. And this is a, by this uh, uh, kind of, uh, kind of uh, I mean, uh, D-wave simulation. And uh, we, we, we use a real D-wave. On the, on, the, on the animation in the middle, okay, on the left figure, basically this, you can consider overall space. This is three dimension space. And each time we have a cut, uh, you, you can consider this as a three dimension space like a cake, okay? And each time, okay, somebody come here to cut part of the cake away. And uh, this is uh, due to this uh, feasibility cut and optimality cut from, from the sub problem. And then the remaining kind of cake becomes smaller. And with a more and more cut, okay, your search dimension for the master problem becomes smaller and smaller. And then moreover, if your problem is a, a linear or convex, then, okay, the upper bound, you can have an upper bound and a lower bound, the right figure. You can see in this case, only four round, okay, it will convert to the optimal solution. And you know it's optimal, okay. So this is basically try to uh, the overall algorithm. And uh, uh, here we have them kind of reference related. So based on this uh, proposed algorithm, we try to employ this uh, idea into the different application. 
And the first one is a wireless communication for the machine learning. So here we try to using this edge computing for the fighter learning. And the fighter learning try to simultaneously kind of uh, um, try to train simultaneously. And uh, uh, so the, and the, due to this resource competition and the perfor uh, performance degradation, so the scheduling problem is typically an NP hard problem. So who should I kind of sample and all these things, uh, especially with the communication constraint, okay, and the computation constraint. So in this case, uh, we use this kind of a quantum computing to uh, have the parallel computing capability are powerful for optimization. And uh, for the existing solution, uh, that uh, in the literature which we list here, and uh, uh, it cannot employ to our kind of a federal learning situation. Since the first reference will result a long computation time, and the second one is a more kind of theoretical analysis. So here we want to using the computation model, specifically we want to use the quantum annealing instead of gate base that we proposed in the previous previously. And here this is a kind of overall optimization, and we have the optimization and uh, have a full component. The first one, the first one is uh, this kind of, uh, let me put it here. Okay. The first one is a transmission cost. So basically, okay, this is the uh, uh, communication cost. Due to the uh, due to the edge computing, you will have this uh, communication cost. And the local update cost, and uh, basically this uh, CPU cycle, and the global aggregation cost, Due to how many rounds you will you will converge and the participation cost of also this is a CPU price. So this is the objective function. And then for the constraint, you have this a CPU a storage constraint and a worker constraint and also a certain communication constraint, I think. Anyway, so this is a basic problem formulation, and obviously this is a least integral uh, programming problem. And here the challenge is how to convert the original mixed integral nonlinear programming problem into a, a integral linear program that can be recognized by this uh, quantum computing. And the second thing is that, okay, how could we further reformulate, reformulate this problem into a QUBO problem? So basically this is a kind of a thing. And again, we decouple this one into the master problem and the slave problem by using the quantum computing and the classic computing. So in this case, okay, we, we decouple the problem. And here is our proposed uh, algorithm and specifically for this uh, uh, federal learning one. And uh, for detail, okay, you can check our published paper. And so basically, okay, we, we try to balance this kind of computation in the quantum computing as well as the classical CPU. And here is some kind of result. We compare with this classic vendor decomposition, which falls in this kind of a server. And we can, on this case one, case two, case three, and case four, we can see that, okay, this kind of convergence, okay, is kind of a upper bound and lower bound. It's upper bound and lower bound. For three cases, the upper bound and lower bound, okay, you will converge kind of, a, a converge too quick. To the to a uh, to a point with uh, just a uh, dozens of iteration, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, the overall result for the classic CPU and the proposed CPU. Okay, we can achieve this kind of a similar result. Okay, and uh, on the other hand, okay, this uh, proposed one will take a fewer iteration compared with this uh, classic one, even with a small setup. So basically on this uh, table, you can see that, okay, the proposed one will have this uh, uh, faster convergence. Yeah. And uh, also, okay, the maximum average access time and the standard deviation uh, for this uh, kind of, uh, I mean, vendor decomposition is, uh, is a very, uh, very high compared with this uh, proposed hybrid one. And uh, yeah, this is because your problem uh, for this, um, but this kind of a uh, classic vendor one might not be, uh, sometimes the card might not be kind of uh, better. Well, for this uh, hybrid one, okay. Uh, especially, okay, for the hybrid one, sometimes you generate a non-optimal solution. Sometimes you generate a multiple solution due to this quantum nature. And then in this case, okay, you can have multiple card per, per iteration. So in this case, okay, you will converge faster. 
And also the server access time, okay? So basically, okay, uh, we can see that, okay, for this, um, if you use a classical method, okay, over the time, okay, this, uh, this kind of uh, time will, will uh, overall time will increase. Well, for this kind of, uh, I mean, proposed one, this uh, server uh, access time over this one will keep the constant. So in this case, we demonstrate that, okay, on the table result, we demonstrate that, okay, even with a very small amount of this uh, kind of uh, network, the quantum, com the hybrid quantum computing already kind of, uh, uh, already can, uh, can beat this uh, classic solver, uh, classic solver, okay, which using in the pure CPU for this. Okay, so this is the first one. And uh, the second one is this kind of a feature selection for machine learning. So for machine learning, okay, it's a classical learning technique facing the complexity of the task. And for quantum computing, we can try to speed it up. And then, okay, so they, that's the reason we want to propose this a quantum machine learning so that, okay, we can reduce this uh, machine learning speed, learning speed. And nowadays, okay, for this machine learning, okay, you know that everybody GPT, right? So, but think about uh, how many kind of training for this uh, train, uh, G, uh, chat GPT, okay, they have a uh, 100 billion kind of a variable that they get trained. So the key question is that, okay, do you have the data to train it? And uh, chat GDP have the Microsoft data that can support them. And uh, also they have invested hundreds of billion dollars already for computing for this one. So in this case, okay, you can see that, see that, okay, the quantum, uh, this is machine learning become a kind of a very costly one, okay? As a matter of fact, okay, uh, uh, last year, okay, uh, Dr. Shen Xiangyang, okay, from the uh, former, uh, former, uh, former uh, kind of a director of a Microsoft Research China, mentioned that, okay, nowadays, if you want to have a meaningful result for this machine learning product, you probably need uh, dozens of millions of dollars due to the computation and the training. So in this case, okay, we found that, okay, th this is something becomes more and more costly. So. If we use the quantum one, would we make it faster and low, uh, low, uh, low cost? So this is basically what is the motivation for that. And in the machine learning, there are many kind of different topics here. We need we select this uh, uh, feature selection. So basically, need to um, use a feature selection. One to we one can optimize the model in such a way. So we have a, a lot of data to train, and we have the relevant feature and the irrelevant feature and the redundant feature. So basically, we, what we want is to try to prevent overfitting, improve the accuracy, and reducing the, uh, uh, the feature time. So basically, by, by selecting the feature, and then we can learn it quick. So in other words, okay, there are so many data. If we select a good feature, and uh, so, so it didn't, uh, we have some good role, role model, and then, okay, we, uh, everybody started, and then, okay, and then we can convert quicker instead of studying everybody and realize which one is good, which one is bad, right? Similar thing. And here to quantify it, okay, we try to have the objective function like this one. We minimize the relevant feature, we'll minimize the redundant feature. So due to the minimization, so the second term is about the relevant one. And then, okay, this uh, the first term is basically regarding this redundant one. So you can see this is more like a easy model, right? This is my own identity. And this is a something, this is a, I mean, feature XJ and a feature XJ, uh, I, okay. How, how they are, how they are kind of uh, related to each other. So that, okay, uh, we will kind of, uh, uh, we want to minimize this one. And obviously there are many, many other constraints and uh, so, for example, okay, we want uh, some feature are conflict with each other, some people come together. Okay, so in this case, okay, we don't list all these kind of detailed uh, kind of uh, constraint, but overall, okay, we try to use this QBO to find the, from the database, we do the data pre processing we get a feature analysis, then we update the feature and then try to run this uh, Q, uh, quantum annealing algorithm to among those, all these features, we select the feature subset, such as, okay, we do the classification. And then compare with um, compare with this kind of uh, 
the victim algorithm for the feature selection, like the GR or select K best, we found out that, okay, our proposed this kind of solution have a better accuracy compared with this, uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, method. Okay, so this is a basic, uh, the feature selection. And finally, we, okay, this, uh, this problem can be, can be applied, employed into uh, many things beyond this, uh, I mean, uh, class uh, wireless communication or machine learning, like the smart grid. So for smart grid, okay, one of the things is the cable routing problem in solar panel. So nowadays, okay, we come back to the Paris uh, Treaty, and uh, then, okay, there are many kind of new uh, renewable energy is uh, deployed. And uh, then, okay, for this uh, solar panel, we want to, uh, we want to have, if, uh, we want to have the best kind of uh, routing of the different energy back into the solar uh, solar inverter. So in this case, okay, the problem is a routing problem. So basically, okay, we have the solar panel, TV, solar inverter back to this uh, uh, power grid. Okay. However, okay, the routing itself back to this kind of, uh, along the different bus back to this kind of server is a, is a kind of anti hard problem. And then we can have this um, this optimization problem. Try to see that okay, which is uh, we try to construct a tree such that okay, when it's shorting back, the objective function is minimized. Okay, here we show this kind of it's a nonlinear problem, and then we show this uh, result that our result can the 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 right curve is the optimal solution, and uh, I mean for the different cases. And then here by using the QBO, we can see that, okay, we can find the optimal solution. We can mimic this optimal, optimal solution distribution with the qubit in a very efficient way so that, okay, in here we all have the highest probability when we do the sample. So we can solve this support solution with one shot. And one more thing I want to talk is that, okay, you think about the Tesla. The Tesla have a eight, more than 8,000 uh, small battery in their, in their car. And then, okay, if you do not take the power efficiently, efficiently, okay, to this kind of uh, uh, bring the power and to, to, the, to, the, uh, uh, to the motor, or when you're uh, charging it, if you don't do a kind of efficient way, then, okay, all this energy, between will will be wasted between the battery because they have this kind of internal resistor. So basically, okay, Tesla. If you think about the, the Tesla, it's indeed not a car con car manufacturer. It's more like a battery management company. Okay, they have very sophisticated algorithm to manage this uh, battery. So this battery, this uh, their battery kind of optimization is somewhat look like the optimization we show here. And uh, they have their algorithm to also solve it. And obviously they cannot use the quantum computing to solve it, right? But anyway, here, okay, I just want to mention, okay, this, they have a similarity here. Okay, and uh, finally we have the conclusion. And uh, for quantum computing, you have the different type. You have the universal quantum, analog quantum, and the quantum annealing. And typically for this quantum circuit that we started in this uh, kind of textbook, belongs to the universal quantum. And here we use the quantum annealing by taking the specific uh, structure proposed by D-Wave and using the easing model so that we can, uh, we can utilize their QOBO mod, uh, model. However, for QOBO model, they have a, a kind of um, limitation for this uh, unconstrained in, uh, binary integral programming. And uh, then by using the bender decomposition, we we extend this QBO to a more general mixed integral programming problem and also can fully take an advantage of uh, quantum computing and classic computing. And this kind of framework can be employed in many places like a wireless communication, machine learning, and uh, smart grid. There are many different kind of solution and different kind of application. And I hope that, okay, this can bring us to a more collaboration in the future. And also, okay, Consider this a quantum a quantum com computing. You can consider like this a Doctor Strange. Okay, so basically by uh, by initializing this kind of a qubit, they can generate uh, okay all this a uh, uh, multi parallel universe and uh, uh, exponentially high. Okay, the the, the number of a parallel universe is exponentially high, and in this case, okay, 
And uh, then when they sample it, okay, how could we select the right one? So basically, this is a uh, this is a kind of model, mathematical model that we describe in the middle, so that we can change our optimization problem to uh, to this kind of a quantum bit such that okay the optimal solution will show up with the highest probability. Okay, so this is a basic story that we want to deliver, and here the reference that we discussed uh, for this uh, for this uh, talk with uh, uh, the um, the solution and also some of our paper. And finally, okay, I allow allow me to advertise our lab. And in your lab, okay, except for study, we do everything else. So I hope that, okay, the pandemic is over. I hope, uh, okay, uh, there are opportunities that you can come to Houston and let's party together. Okay, and also for the video and the slide, you can find on our uh, lab website as well as my website. Okay, you can, uh, the video slide and even the code, uh, you can be found there. And finally, thank you very much. Okay, any question?